Welcome to lesson four. Today we're going to talk about the Sustainable Development Goals or the SDGs and we're also going to talk about waste. Have you ever seen this symbol before? These 17 colours represent the 17 Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs. The 17 global goals were designed to protect the planet against climate change and to make the world safer, fairer and a more just place for everyone. Everything we need for every citizen is right here on planet Earth, but we need to share what we produce fairly and sustainably. While working to become plastic free ambassadors, we are focusing on a number of the goals. Yesterday's lesson about marine plastic was connected to SDG 14, Life Below Water. Our whole project is connected to SDG 12, Responsible Consumption and Production, which looks at how we use the resources on our planet and how we manage our waste. We also have strong connections to SDG 15, Life on Land, and of course to SDG 13, Climate Action. Our plastic use is connected to these goals and all the goals are connected to each other. We want to work together to achieve these goals by 2030 and we need everybody's help, including yours. There are three ways you can use your power and creativity to help us to achieve these goals. You can invent, innovate, and campaign. So you can come up with new solutions, or ways of doing things, or you can teach the people around you why we want to change. And as a plastic-free ambassador, you are a change maker. Change makers care, they get creative, and they collaborate. Today, let's look more at SDG 12, Responsible Consumption and Production. When we produce something responsibly, we look at the whole life cycle of the product, how we make it, how we use it, and how we dispose of it. As part of SDG 12, we want to work together to substantially reduce our waste. And we can do this through prevention, reduction, recycling, and reuse. So what is waste? As long as humans have been on this planet, we've always created waste from our bodies, from the water we use and from things that we no longer need or want. When we're finished with this waste, we throw it away. But where is a way? For most of the hundreds of thousands of years that humans have been on our planet, we've got rid of our waste in similar ways. So, for example, if we had a banana peel or an apple core, we put it into a hole in the ground, cover it over and over time it would decompose. And we do something similar still today. We have a huge hole in the ground that we dump all our rubbish into. We might call it the dump or landfill. But unlike what happened for hundreds of thousands of years, where our waste decomposed and broke down back into soil, nowadays our landfills are filled with objects that don't break down. Most of it is made of plastic. And most of our rubbish we put into plastic bags and tie it closed. So even that plastic bag takes hundreds of years to break down. So nowadays, when humans create waste, we have a number of choices of how we're gonna get rid of it. If we choose to throw it away, we have a choice of maybe three bins. One is our waste bin that goes to landfill. Another one is our recycling bin. We're gonna be talking more about recycling in the next lesson. And then our third bin might be our compost, or in Ireland, we call it the brown bin. And we'll be talking more about that in a later lesson also. So today we're going to talk about the rubbish bin or the waste bin that ends up going to landfill. So a lot of the ways that we use things and then get rid of them nowadays is a linear economy. So we use something, we get its value and then we throw it away and it ends up in landfill forever. A linear economy is take, make, use and dispose. A circular economy focuses on keeping things in use for as long as possible. So we want to maximise the value of the thing while we're using it and when we're finished with it we want to recover the value from it and regenerate it into something new. In this way, rather than taking new resources from the earth, we use what we've already taken and keep it in circulation for as long as possible. Recycling is part of the circular economy. For example, rather than creating new glass, we recycle glass and use it as glass again and the circle goes on. We keep it in circulation for as long as possible. Circular economy works best when we design the whole life cycle of a product right from the start. So I think it's time that we need to start redesigning so that more of our waste ends up going back into use. 
Some people think that we have a waste management problem, but I think that we have a production problem. If we are producing things that we use once and throw away and end up in landfill forever, then we haven't used the creative and innovative powers of our human minds to create a better system. And now is the time. I really hope that when you are my age, that most of the things that you buy and consume are regularly designed as part of a circular economy. Plastic bags. We use plastic bags when we are shopping for food and other items, or when we want to carry something to somewhere or give something to someone. We use them as a convenient way to carry things around and back home with us, especially if we have more items than our two hands can carry. Thanks to our plastic bag tax, in Ireland we pay for our plastic carrier bags. While some of these are made from stronger plastic and called a bag for life, they often don't get reused. Plastic bags are made from soft plastic, so if you are throwing it away, it must go into your normal waste bin to be brought to landfill. Bring bags with you when you go shopping or reuse the cardboard boxes left over in the supermarket to pack your goods. Nowadays, tote bags made from all different fabrics are available. When it comes to making this swap, as with all of them, the thing you already own is the most sustainable. A new good habit is to carry a bag on your back and walk to the shop, maybe with some other bags inside. When I do that, I can also carry my reusable water bottle and anything else I need. Ireland was one of the first countries to bring in the plastic bag levy in 2002. Since then, many more countries have followed our lead. A levy is an extra tax that you have to pay to the government. The point is to try and encourage you to use less plastic bags. It was really successful and led to a 90% drop in plastic bags used in shops. Imagine if we impose that levy on other single-use items. In this simple swap, we've talked about plastic carrier bags, but think about the other plastic bags you use. Sandwich bags, Ziploc bags, bin bags and more. We'll look at these further in a later lesson. Over the last few lessons, I've been referring to our bad plastic habits. And I want to talk a little bit now about what is a habit. So often when we talk about habits, we talk about bad habits, but we also have good habits. And a habit is something that we do without thinking about it. So you might have a good habit, like brushing your teeth every morning or night, or you might have a bad habit, like drinking too much fizzy drinks when you're at a party. Why do we do the things that we do? Some people might say, that's just the way it's done, or that's how we've always done things, or that's how everybody else does it. So often habits are things that we do because that's what we see other people around us doing. We don't often stop and think, is this healthy for me? Is this healthy for the planet? Is there another way that we could do this? Right now we're working on changing some of our habits around single use plastic. I think to change a habit, you need to think about the three Ps. So the first one is you need to understand the purpose. So know why you are changing your habit. In this case, we wanna use less single use plastic because we understand that it's bad for the planet. The second P is that we need to prepare. So we need to plan what we're gonna do instead of that habit. And we need to think about when we do this, why we do it and how we can do it differently. And the third P is to practice. Practice, practice, practice. If we decide that we're gonna break the habit of using plastic straws, we need to practice each time we go into a cafe or restaurant to remember to say, no straw please. And of course, this is something that often takes a little bit of courage, you have to be brave, you have to um, stand out and do things differently. But I promise you, if you are brave enough to begin to take these steps, it's gonna have a ripple effect. So when you say no straw please, it's gonna make the person that you're ordering from begin to think. Hmm, I wonder why this person doesn't want a straw. And then if a few people come into their cafe and restaurant and say, no straw please, then they're gonna really begin to think, I wonder why people don't want to use plastic straws anymore. They might do a bit of research or they might ask you, why don't you want to use a plastic straw? And when you explain it to them, then they might begin to, to offer alternatives. So maybe they'll change to paper straws or maybe they'll begin to use metal straws that they can wash in their kitchens. 
I've already seen massive changes happening in cafes and restaurants. A couple of years ago, everywhere you went only had plastic straws. And now you're beginning to see options and you're beginning to see that it's normal for people to say no straw please or to bring their own with them. I imagine that in the future, that might just be the normal habit and that we won't see plastic straws in cafes and restaurants anymore. Let's just recap. To change your habit, you need the three Ps. You need to know your purpose, you need to be prepared, and you need to practice. Today, I want you to make a plan to stop using plastic bags. I'm sure most of you already bring your own bags to the shop, but be prepared to make sure you don't forget by having some in your car or by putting an extra bag or two into your backpack so that you're prepared the next time you're out and about. I also want you to start thinking about the other bags that you use, sandwich bags or Ziploc bags, plastic party bags or bin bags. Is there another thing that you could use instead? For today's upcycle challenge, I want you to think of ways that you can reuse the plastic bags that you already have. I'm sure many households in Ireland have a bag or a drawer full of bags, too many that we could ever bring shopping. So let's give them a new lease of life. Can you think of another use for them or can you make them into something creative, fun, beautiful? Use your imagination and see what you come up with. Please share what you make with us or your idea for reuse using the hashtags PF for kids or plastic free ambassador. For today's lesson, I want you to engage your school community. So that's not only your classmates and your teacher, but the secretary, the caretaker, the principal, the cleaners, all the people who work in your school. Schools also have a board of management that makes decisions on how the school is run, and many schools also have a parents' association. Think about the committees that are in your school. Do you have a students union or a green school committee? Today, I want you to pick one person or one committee and write a letter or an email to them explaining what you're doing. Explain to them that you are becoming a plastic free ambassador and that you want your school to get involved also. Tell them the reasons why, that we want to change our plastic habits for us and for all the beings on our planet. Maybe your school could try and use less plastic or create a compost heap to prevent some of your waste from ending up in landfill. I've given lots of workshops to Plastic Free for Schools in Cork and Tipperary, and they have been challenged to stop using plastic bottles, to stop using plastic straws, and to reduce the amount of single-use plastic in their lunches. We'll be talking more about this in lesson seven, but for now, I want you to write an email or a letter explaining to them that you are becoming a plastic free ambassador and that you want them to get involved. There are lots of resources that you can download from our Plastic Free for Schools program online.